Marketing is important, not just for the vanity metrics, like how many Instagram followers you have or how many YouTube subscribers you have, but it is important because it helps you get more revenue and more profit. That is the reason why you do marketing. It is absolutely useless if you have like 100,000 followers, but you're making zero dollars in sales. So we need to actually build an intentional community of your ideal customers, not just your friends and family, because they're not going to bankroll your business, right? You need actual customers that are going to pay for your products in your community. So we're going to talk about how you can build an intentional community of your ideal customer that will actually buy your products. And that's what I'm going to break down in this episode. And I'm going to be giving you eight steps. Steps one to six are things everyone can do. No matter if you're just starting out or even if you're a seasoned business, those are all things I want you to revisit. And then steps seven and eight are for when you are, you know, you figure things out and you're ready to grow and scale and you have some more budgets. So I'm really excited to walk you through it. And I'm going to give you a high level overview. This is essentially the strategy I walk through with our clients. And I suggest you take notes. I also wanted to level set and just say that this will take probably months for you to implement. So I hope you don't get too overwhelmed. My goal with this is to handhold you through it and walk you through it step by step. But just know that you're not like, I don't want you to execute this all in one day. Like we want you to work through it through months and months and be intentional and strategic about it. And I also wanted to say that your conscious brand deserves to grow and be successful. I mentioned it in our last episode where I talked about the ultimate sales strategies that fashion brands need in 2024. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about the ultimate marketing strategies that fashion brands need. And sales and marketing really go hand in hand. So if you didn't listen to my last episode, I highly recommend you do so after you finish this one, because I do think it's really going to complement each other. And some of the stuff you'll see is similar from a sales perspective. So obviously, we want to continue to analyze your data, make sure we are strategic about that. And when it comes to your marketing, we always want to analyze that as well. So you'll see some similarities. But at the end of the day, I do firmly believe you need to take the time to build out your sales funnel, but also build out your marketing strategy and marketing funnel too, if you will. So I'm excited to dive in. And like I mentioned in my last sales episode, if you are a sustainable fashion brand that has already launched and made a minimum of 20K, and your goal this year is to increase your revenue, improve your profits, and grow and scale your brand, then I would love to invite you to potentially work together through our business consulting services. With our business consulting services, you will work directly with me and I only accept a limited amount of clients every single year. So doors are currently open. I'm really excited to be able to welcome some new clients and essentially the goal is to help you achieve your objectives. So whatever revenue target you have or whatever profit target you have, be it achieving X amount of monthly consistent sales or X amount in annual revenue and profit, I will help you get there. We will break it down. I will make a customized bespoke strategy and action plan and roadmap and be there with you every step of the way to support you through it. And what I talked about in this episode and also in our last sales episode is just a sliver of what I cover with our clients. So if you like what I outlined in these two episodes and you think it would be helpful for you, I would love to potentially chat and see if it's a fit to work together. So you can visit recloseted.com slash biz or B-I-Z and look at the services, see how it works. And then on that page, there are links to book a complimentary consultation with me. You will chat directly with me, not some random person. And we can just chat to see if I can help you and see if it's a fit to work together. Again, recloseted.com slash biz, and it will be also linked in the show notes for you. And now I'm going to break down the eight steps that are crucial to build a community of ideal customers that will actually buy your products. Step one is really important, and I've talked about it a little bit before on the podcast, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper because this is really crucial as the first step. So step one, without any more delay, is figuring out your ideal customer. So this is important, and you want to be as specific as possible. We want to narrow this down. And I know that sometimes when I talk about figuring out your ideal customer or focusing on a niche, people can feel like they're leaving money on the table. And what I will say is instead of looking at it like that, you're actually really resonating and being able to connect with your ideal customer. Because when you're first starting out, you have limited time, limited resources, and limited budget. And as such, if you try to speak to 
everyone, all genders, all ages, all demographics, all psychographics is just going to be so fluffy and so generic and it's not really going to land with anyone. And so instead, it's so much more strategic to actually pick and focus and figure out who that one target person is, speak directly to them, make products for them, tailor your copy to them, tailor your marketing to them and everything so that they feel like your brand and your products are exactly for them. They will send it to other people like them because they feel like that you made basically just for them. And then your brand can pick up and scale and then you can expand and serve more people. So really narrow down who your ideal customer is. You're not leaving money on the table. Instead, you are really resonating with that one demographic. And then that way, your brand can take off, gain track grow and scale and then you have more budgets and resources to expand and target more people but as you're starting out if you are not currently hitting your sales goal or revenue goals and you're kind of trying to appeal to everyone then I would highly suggest you figure out who you want to serve and help and every single business at the end of the day is meant to help and serve someone so my pro tip here is to pick someone that you are really passionate about supporting because you're going to be thinking about this person day in and day out 24 7 and if you don't really care about them it doesn't make your job very fun so pick someone you actually care about helping and if it's yourself if you are currently feeling like there's a gap in the market you can't find products you want that is fine but also don't make your lived experience everyone's lived experience you want to make sure you go out and get enough data and I'm going to speak to that in step two But yeah, I will just say step one is figure out your ideal customer. This is crucial. You cannot be for everyone. You need to be for a specific person. And that is how you're successful in your marketing. So step two is get to know your ideal customer inside and out. This is so important because you want to figure out what are they struggling with? What are their pain points? What are their challenges? And you want to zoom out and figure out what they're dealing with in their lives in general, but also, of course, with their clothing, with their wardrobe, so that you can figure out what products might make sense to make for them. And how you're going to do that is through market research. I mentioned this in the last step, but if you are your ideal customer, that is fine. But you cannot assume that your experience is everyone else's experience. That is a detrimental trap I see newbie slow fashion founders make. And the reason why you can't do that is because that is not enough data to go off of. You can't simply assume that because you want this or you don't want something, that is the case for everyone else. That is just foolish. So you need to go out and do market research in the form of surveys and interviews. And I want you to go out and talk to these people, okay? Because that is how you're going to really figure out who they are, get enough statistically significant data so that you can actually make informed business decisions. This is a wild concept, right? We're going to go out and talk to our ideal customer to figure out what they want. It does not seem like rocket science, but a lot of people miss this crucial step. And then they come to me and they're like, what platform should I be on? What type of content should I be posting? What type of product should I be launching? And I am the wrong person to ask. Unless I'm your ideal customer, then that's fine. But if I'm not your ideal customer, you need to go out and talk to them and find them. So step two, get to know them inside and out through market research surveys and interviews and really just collect as much data as possible. I don't think there is such thing as collecting too much data. So just making sure you really think through what are they struggling with in their life? What type of content would they resonate with? What type of products would really help them get to know them inside and out? And then step three is something you have likely heard me say before, but I will say it again because I still stand by it in 2024. So step three, after you have figured out your ideal customer and you've gotten to know them inside and out, is to then pick one social media platform and pair it with email marketing. So this is still important in 2024 because if you still have limited budget and resources and time, you cannot spread yourself thin. I think it's even more important in today's day and age because there's so many different social media accounts, there's so many different platforms, and people's attention spans are just getting shorter and shorter. And if you want someone to follow you, you need to put out valuable content and give them a solid reason why they should. And creating valuable content is much harder and It's much easier said than done. And as such, you need to take a lot of time, energy, and resources to create that content, which is why I always say you pick one social media platform. 
if you were on every platform under the sun, you would be spread so thin and none of them would be done well. And like I mentioned, in today's day and age, you need to create really good content in order for someone to follow you. So make sure you are prioritizing that one social media platform. You can do a good job at it, knock it out of the park, actually attract your ideal customer, which I'm going to talk about later. But it's important to attract them, get them in your community, grow your community, have them buy your stuff, and then you have enough budget to potentially hire a social media intern or a part-time contractor to help you. And then you can be on more platforms. But very similarly to picking your ideal customer slash choosing your niche, I want you to do the same thing with your social media. Because Again, as a startup small business, you don't have all the time, resources, and budget in the world, so we need to be strategic about it. And I also recommend pairing your one social media platform with email marketing because you are not at the beck and call of algorithms, and that is customer real estate that you own. So you always know your first name, last name of your customer, and then the email address, and you know that if you email them, they're going to get it. So it is really, really important, and every D2C e-com brand should have a really good email list. So I I always recommend you do that. And then my last tip here is that in regards to the social media platform you choose, people always ask me, Selena, what platform should I be on? What's going to be the best use of my time? But again, if I'm not your ideal customer, then do not ask me because you need to be asking your ideal customer where they are. The worst is if you spend all this time and energy and resources into creating content and it is not even seen by your ideal customer because they're not even on that platform. As an example, let's say we're trying to target corporate working women that are really high up in their fields. So they're executives. And so they're probably like skew a little bit older. It might make sense probably to be on LinkedIn. But if you're on TikTok trying to reach this older demographic, it probably won't work, right? So this is just me guessing, but you need to go out and get that market research data to validate it because it is so important. If you're going to only be on one social media platform, you need to really be strategic and make damn sure that it is the right one and they are actually there. So really take the time to figure that out. Another example I want to illustrate is I once had a client that was making sustainable wedding dresses and her target demographic was brides-to-be and brides-to-be spend a lot of time on Pinterest because they're pinning things as inspo, they're trying to you know, make mood boards and all this stuff. So for her, it made sense for her to be on Pinterest. But at the time, TikTok was really blowing up and I told her that yes she could be on TikTok later but as of right now it made the most business sense for her to be on Pinterest and she listened to me and she was able to do really really well for her first launch because she focused on Pinterest that makes sense for her business but it might not make sense for your business if you're trying to target males let's say right so really think about where your ideal customer is and that will help dictate which social media platform you should be on so the first three steps so important figuring out your ideal customer getting to know them inside out through market research and then picking one social media platform and doing email marketing as well. And then step four builds upon all of that. Step four is to create valuable content. This is key, like I mentioned, because in today's day and age, people will only follow you if your content is good. So you want to make sure you're knocking it out of the park with your content. And here are some questions you can ask yourself. So you can pause this episode and just journal or jot down your thoughts. But these are just some prompts I came up with to help you figure out what content you should develop. So first of all, who is your ideal customer? Write that down. Next, what would your ideal customer be curious about and find helpful? And then after that, think through what pain points and challenges your ideal customer is facing, both in their life in general, but also with their clothing. And from that, you can start to gather ideas of what types of content to post. And I know sometimes when I say post valuable content, people are like, yeah, that makes sense. But then when they actually go to post on social media platform, it just kind of doesn't happen. And I look at the content and I'm like, what is this? So I'm going to give you some examples just to make it super crystal clear. I'm going to give you two examples. So the first example is a past client that was targeting nine to five corporate working gals that were in their 20s. So they were earlier in their career, kind of figuring things out. And the content that did really well for her was 
just like centered around women's careers. So she did a lot of like resume and cover letter tips, how to negotiate your salary tips. She also did a lot of capsule wardrobes and styling for office wear. And her line was great because it was high quality really cute fashionable pieces that could be worn a lot of different ways was versatile because a lot of the early 20s don't have a huge budget for their wardrobe and they need to be able to style things a lot of different ways and they need to be able to you know go to date night or happy hour so she did a lot of that capsule wardrobe collection type of content that did really well for her but then also she did a lot of career advice content which does well because it helps with the virality of the account and also the shareability because if the tips are really good guess what this 20 something korea woman is going to send it to all her friends and maybe all her coworkers that she likes and then it just builds up buzz right so that's the first example second example is another client of mine she started a travel brand so her pieces were versatile pieces that were sweat proof spill proof wrinkle proof and could be worn a lot of different ways so that you could go to Europe or go abroad with a carry-on suitcase. That was kind of the brand ethos and the brand mission. So content for her that did really well was travel tips, packing tips, uncovered gems of places to go, outfit styling tips, just things like that. And so from these two examples, I hope you can see that the target demographic and the ideal customer is very, very specific and very niche. And then beyond that, they thought deeply about what would resonate with that target demographic. You want to create content that your target demographic would be into so that you attract them, but also so that they send it to other people so that you can capitalize on that word of mouth marketing as well. And step five is to then post consistently. Once you have your valuable content ideas, you have an idea of what you want to test, the next step is to really be consistent with it. And this, again, is easier said than done. I do think it's really important to be consistent for two reasons. So the first one is that your community needs to be able to trust you. And in my opinion, if they can even trust you to post regularly on social media, they might be like, "Mm, I don't really know if this is like a legit business, you know, like that kind of stuff does come up. So you do want to signify to your community that they can count on you and they can rely on you. And then secondly, being consistent also makes you a better marketer because you are constantly putting out new content, testing things. And the goal is to really be able to cringe at your old stuff because practice really does make perfect. And I look back to like my first episode of Recloseted Radio or one of our first Instagram posts, which is now archived. But I look back and I cringe because it's just like, oh, it's so bad. But at the time, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is such a good podcast episode or like this is such a good Instagram post. And that's the goal, right? Like you continuously get better so that you look back and you realize that those were all just first drafts. So that's the goal. Just post consistently. And some tips here is to batch your content. I'm likely not the first person to tell you this, but I don't want you to wake up every single day with no idea what you're going to post and frantically try to figure something out because that's not going to be good content. So you want to pre-plan everything. I would definitely recommend batching at minimum two weeks in advance. So plan out all your captions, all your you know, videos, all your posts, whatever it is, schedule it and then have it be done so that you can be consistent. And so the last step and kind of the organic realm is to analyze and adapt. So as a recap, step one was to figure out your ideal customer. Step two was get to know them inside and out. Step three was to pick one social media platform and also email marketing. Step four was to create valuable content. Step five was to be consistent. And step six is to analyze and adapt. So with your marketing, I want you to pretend like you're a scientist, okay? I want you to have a lot of different hypotheses around what might work, what, you know, you want to test, and just be curious about it. I want you to test a lot of different things to really figure out what's going to stick and what's going to land with your ideal customer. 
take your ego out of it. I know sometimes if you're creating content, you can get upset if it doesn't do well. But at the end of the day, if you're a scientist and this is just like a little lab test, then it's fine. It's not that you're a bad marketer or you suck at making posts. It's just that it's a test and it didn't work and that's fine. You move on and you keep iterating and you keep testing. Okay, so this is really important. We need to see what's working and what's not. I talked about analyzing and adapting in my last sales episode. Exact same thing here with your marketing content. And this goes without saying, but do more of what's working. And if something isn't working, analyze why. Is it because the video is too long? Is it because the first line in the caption sucked? Is it because, I don't know, like just the content in general, your ideal customer doesn't care about it. Really dig deep and see why. And yeah, just get scientific about it. Take your ego out of it. And then the last two steps, step seven and step eight, are really for when you have a little bit more bandwidth and budget. So if you're just starting out, I still want you to listen, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed because I think if you just focus on steps one to six and get really, really good at your organic marketing, you will be successful and this will like get you to six figures and beyond if you do it correctly. However, if you're now ready to grow and scale, would love to talk through some paid options. I like to give this analogy like a flywheel. So if you've read the flywheel book, if you do steps one to six correctly and your marketing starts to take off, the flywheel starts to happen, then step seven and eight can make it take off and spin faster. So step seven is to start to work with content creators and influencers. And this is something that I want you to be very intentional and strategic about. Just because you have some money doesn't mean that you want to blow it. We still want to be very, very intentional about it. And I know when I talk about working with content creators and influencers, some of my clients can be a little prickly about it because maybe when they first started out and they didn't really know what they were doing, they worked with someone and it was kind of a flop and a waste of money. And then they kind of assume that it's going to happen with every single content creator and influencer, which is not the case. You just need to be really, really strategic about your partnerships. So a couple of tips here that I'm happy to share with you. First of all, make sure their community has your ideal customer in it. That is key. If you are paying them to get in front of their audience, you need to make sure your ideal customer is actually following them. So you can simply just go through their profiles and just scroll and just click on some people, see if that's who you want to be resonating with. Alternatively, take a look at some of their content, right? Like, is that the type of content you think your ideal customer would be into? As an example, if we were starting a brand and we were targeting corporate working gals and there was this finance bro meme page that was doing really well, it probably doesn't make sense for us to partner with them, even if they're doing well and even if their engagement's high, because probably only finance bros follow them, right? And we're trying to target corporate working gals, which is the complete polar opposite. That's just an example, but you really do want to make sure that your ideal customer is in their community. Secondly, you want to make sure this content creator or this influencer is aligned with your brand values. I cannot stress this enough. If this content creator is doing a Shein haul or they're buying things every single day, probably not the best fit. And you want to think if you are comfortable with your brand being associated with their brand. On top of that, take a look at some of the other brands or companies they have partnered with. And if they've partnered with fast fashion brands or brands that maybe don't have the same values as you, you don't really want to be associated with that. And so it may not be the best idea to partner with them because as soon as you put your brand and your name in front of an audience, they may associate your brand with other things that you may not want to be associated with. So just some things to think about. And then last but not least, you of course want to check their analytics. So just check if everything's, you know, checks out, make sure they're not buying followers, all that stuff. And because I know brands have a tricky time working with content creators and influencers, I am going to have my friend Cynthia on the podcast. She has an amazing YouTube channel. She has an amazing Instagram account, and she's going to speak to how to best work with content creators. So leave any questions you have for Cynthia in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Or if you're listening to this, you can slide into our DMs at Recloseted on Instagram or email us. But I was thinking of asking Cynthia, like, how do you reach out to an influencer if you don't know them? How do you negotiate rates? If you're a brand with not a lot of budget, like, is gifting okay? Or is that 
big no-no? How do you approach that conversation? How to ensure it's a good working relationship and good campaign? So I'm going to ask you all of that. Those are my plans right now. But if you have any other questions, feel free to send them in. And then step eight is to amplify it with actual paid marketing in terms of ad dollars. So this I put last because I am a firm believer that you need to figure out your marketing organically or for free first. I mean, unless you have millions and millions of dollars to blow, in which case, totally fine. I guess you can just experiment with money from the get-go. But I gave you the analogy previously of being a scientist and testing what works and what doesn't. I would really advise you to figure it out organically first before you spend money on it, because otherwise you are gambling with your money. And so it's really important to nail the content you're putting out first, see what type of content resonates, see you know what type of captions, images, things like that do well. And then once you have something that's doing well, by all means, amplify it. Because again, like I mentioned, I think it's kind of a waste of money if you haven't figured out your organic strategy and you just jump straight into paid. Don't experiment with your money unless you have a ton of it and you know you don't mind losing some of your money. And I really think that if you do all of this correctly, steps one to six, and then also seven and eight, this will help you tremendously with your sales because you're going to be driving so much more traffic to your business and your funnel is just going to get better and better and better. So I hope that this was helpful for you. I'm really excited to be able to share these eight steps with you. I hope you're not too overwhelmed. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, it is going to take some time to set it up. So I don't expect you to have it all done for tomorrow. This is going to take time, but make sure you do every single step. And I'm really excited to speak a little bit more about marketing in the next couple of episodes. I'm going to be inviting two really exciting guests onto the podcast. The first one I mentioned is Cynthia. We're going to talk about content. We're going to talk about working with content creators and influencers. And I'm also interviewing Brittany from the Sustainable fashion forum and we're going to talk about how to build an engaged community so i'm really excited and if you have any questions for cynthia and or Brittany, you can leave them down below if you're watching on youtube or you can dm us at recloseted on instagram Last but not least, friendly reminder that I am accepting more business consulting clients. So as you're listening to this, if you're ready to significantly increase your revenue, improve your profits, and grow and scale your brand this year, I would love to chat with you and see if it's a fit to work together. You can go to recloseday.com slash biz, B-I-Z. Link is in the show notes for you to take a look through what our process is like and book a complimentary consultation together. I hope that you got a lot out of this and we will continue the conversation in the next couple of episodes.